everyone. Thanks for popping in and seeing what I'm doing. My name is Nikki B, and I am so glad you are here with me. Continuing on, borderline personality disorder, discovering, understanding, and getting to get a grip on our disability of borderline disability, which is a very, very destructive disorder. Chapter 21. Simple Ideas for Addressing Avoidant Borderline Personality Disorder This avoidance is triggered by the BPD's strong fear of being betrayed or disciplined by others. Such symptoms usually include negative self-attitudes that are caused under certain conditions. These behaviors and beliefs can lead one to a host of emotions such as fear, guilt, or rage, which are in effect avoided to relieve their distress. Such a tactic may yield rapid results in the short term, but it will typically dial fear and anger into an unstable loop. You therefore need to adopt new strategies that can produce long-term results to ease your evading tendency and limited personality. The first strategy you should try is to face your fears the next time because that will help you come up with new ways of perceiving reality. In such circumstances, our brain activates an integrated mechanism called habitation that allows us to get used to stimuli previously experienced in fear. On the next day, try to stop the thoughts from manifesting and just see how things evolve. This may be daunting at first because you were used to acting on your feelings Feelings, but you really should do it because it has the potential for improvement for you. So ask yourself whether or not your fear is based on reality. In other words, are you afraid of being abandoned for practical reasons? If this step is hard for you, try to think about for a moment what your life would be like without this fear. How much happier and how much more will your relationships be if you were freed from this pain and misery? Take the fate of your life in your hands and be your boss, not your own slave. The second strategy to combat the evasive behaviors and borderline personality is to look at new ways to see the world rather than the dichotomous black and white model. It may be possible that your family or your entourage caused this way of thinking. In any case, try to keep in mind that the world in which you live is never just black and white and that it has a lot of dark shadows most often. If you are going to find it challenging at first, try to continue your efforts because your short and long-term benefits far outweigh your ongoing fight and rage. The third technique in your daily life includes breathing exercises paired with meditation. The exercise removes all the tension and pressure generated during the day and helps you relax and calm your body and mind. You will also discover hidden powers and resources in yourself to help you conquer daily obstacles. A calm and relaxed mind is also significantly less likely to think only in black and white and is more open to seeking new ways to see and understand the world. Try to keep you doing this exercise at least once each day and, if done correctly, develop your avoiding behaviors and restricting personality from day one. Chapter 22. Sex and Borderline Personality Disorder it seems to be a common theme with those suffering from borderline personality disorder that, even if they are not in a monogamous relationship with BPD, they are often reckless sex with many partners or seek several sexual relationships. We should quickly discuss gender and BPD in this chapter. One of the main explanations why BPD people are so confused about gender is that they always feel emotionally various. One reason behind borderline personality disorder and sex is that the client with BPD actually tries to manipulate their marriage to end the relationship before it is finally abandoned. Another theory regarding risky sex and borderline personality disorder is that the BPD patient actually has an emotional relationship with the sexual partner, although only for a brief period of time. They basically try to fill space within themselves and try to fill this gap with gender. Following a sexual affair, a person with a borderline personality disorder may not be guilty of the same amount of non-BPD. It is because people with borderline personality disorders also project negative behaviors on others, including their families. This means that someone who has a senseless sexual affair will tend to build a fake affair that their wife or loved one 
has in their heads. You literally believe that your wife is also cheating and therefore justifying your irresponsible sexual affair. There are several explanations for gender and this condition. If you believe you have certain personality disorders, you should seek professional advice. If your partner already has borderline personality issues and you believe that they have risky sexual behavior, you will make your feelings known by either partnering with the person to help them and receive treatment or determining if the relationship is impossible. Finding an unhappy companion with personality disorders is no longer just a threat to your health, but also your psychological well-being. Before you get stuck in trying to prove that your husband with BPD has sexual affairs outside of marriage, you may want to focus on the fact that he or she has a boundary personality disorder and decide to support them or to terminate their relationship. If you are manipulated by your wife in any way, irrespective of getting BPD, you have to put your protection above all else. No emotional or physical abuse is an excuse for mental illness. If you are currently looking for a psychologist specializing in BPD, make sure that you bet on their credentials and that they understand BPD, as many therapists have trouble diagnosing BPD and finding the appropriate theories. Chapter 23. Borderline Personality Disorder and Rage If you have been diagnosed with a BPD, there are good chances of having more than your share of BPD. What is borderline rage exactly? It is extreme wrath that is targeted to something else or to someone. It is sometimes directed inward and expresses itself in self-abuse such as cutting. The borderline anger is most often aimed at the one you care for, the one you want to love the most. This creates an almost endless tug of war between the person with BPD and their loved ones. Borderline anger can in some cases be directed against anyone in the house. Any easy target, that is. The desire of a person to be close to their loved one, but being afraid to trust them enough to allow them to care closely enough and therefore reject them, is a source of intense wrath. From where does it come? Borderline anger is usually caused by abandonment issues in a child's life. The hurt is deep and often inaccessible except through therapy since the child has no language. In the most seemingly innocent transactions, boundaries still come to the surface. In my situation, in a matter of minutes, I could go from zero to nuclear when provoked. I, like most people who cared for me, was almost always stunned because I didn't know what triggered a frenzied outburst to bubble up and burn. In therapy, I discovered that my resentment was profoundly resolved because I was rejected as a young baby, just six months old. It was exacerbated by growing up with a father who had his own issues with anger, but never learned to correctly communicate his frustration, so it was rooted deep inside of him and was unwieldy. I strongly believe that people with BPD were made. That's not how they are raised. You know what you experience, and my dad was an exceptional role model in my situation. My dad never told me that he loved me until I was 28 and had made a serious attempt to commit suicide. When I married my husband, a man who refused to break down his emotional ties with his first wife and who had made clear that he wanted more children, his actions was further compounded. I lived like his concubine all the years of my marriage, raising his four children with little support from him. I started to cool down until the lid jumped right down from the top of the bowl. I never knew if he could abandon me to return to his previous relationship with his former wife. It kept me in constant anxiety and chaos. I discovered that whenever I wanted to get close to another guy, they betrayed me somehow and told me I was absolutely unlovable. Who can trust me? Who can love me? It is almost impossible for people with a borderline personality disorder to accept that someone can love him for who he is because he often doesn't have a sense of where he is to begin. When you meet someone who says you love them, you'll check them over and over to prove your love. Essentially, they muck the side that nourishes them. In this way, they set the stage for someone else to leave them and replicate the old pattern in an almost endless cycle 
again. If a person with a borderline personality disorder starts to understand, recognize, and accept that therapy traps them in this endless cycle with their own cognitive distortions, they may begin to approach their relationships differently. We will learn to stop being mad and frustrated throughout the world and to renegotiate their closest relationships and enjoy it. It can be very difficult to learn to be another human. It ends with introspection. The person with borderline personality disorder will learn to recognize their causes and find out better ways to respond. I have reacted instead of responding. I used to believe that I had cancer in my heart, but after years and years of disorder, it's now in remission. In some days, I think the cancer is cured. Chapter 24 Borderline Personality Disorder and Psychotherapy Several therapies on how to cure borderline personality disorder have been tested and are still being explored. Yet experts say that this abnormality is not really healed. What they can really do for the patient is to teach him and his support group how to cope with his or her condition in general. Psychotherapy is one medication that can help a person with BPD. Psychotherapy is a kind of treatment in which a skilled psychotherapist and his client develop interpersonal relations. This will support a customer with his living problems. And how do they do that? How do they do this? You do this through ongoing dialogue. But don't be mistaken to think that this is just for a one-on-one discussion, because the psychotherapist is imaginative. This can also be done with groups. It aims to increase the well-being of a person and to improve the mental health of a consumer. So how can psychotherapy benefit a borderline personality disorder customer? As previously stated... This can be achieved for teams when doing psychotherapy. This team acts as the customer support system. The customer support group could be family, friends, and or family. These help overcome self-esteem issues because they will empower the consumer and ensure that he or she can do it sincerely and that he or she will rely on it regardless. For ways to help reverse your teen habitual models to display borderline character traits, there is a reason why people under 18 years of age are not diagnosed with a personality disorder. The theory is that young people have been known to make important improvements in negative aspects of their character for the better through intensive psychotherapy and family support. Borderline Personality Disorder, BPD, can be characterized by sudden mood swings, dysfunctional interactions, and strong impulsivity. Adults with minimal personality disorder typically have low self-esteem, anxiety, and chronic depression. Suicidal threats are not unusual in adults with BPD, a threat that needs to be taken seriously because completed suicides occur in around 10% of BPD individuals. In contrast to the risk of living, the difficulty in stable relationships with others is usually characterized by an incapacity to sustain a career, broken intimate relationships, and legal problems. Many people usually have assumptions of BPD, but in fact, only about the same number of men have BPD. Typically, they are not treated, and most of them are in prison. Teenagers with high BPD symptoms typically have a low sense of self-worth, threats to suicide, self-injury, think cuts, as well as self-reporting vacuousness. We often view themselves as easily irritated and regularly have outbursts of anger, and intimate relationships with family and peers typically are marked by uncertainty, confusion, and impulsiveness. There are four ways in which young parents with powerful frontier characteristics can support them on the road to change for the better. 1. It's okay to make mistakes. Because most adolescents with strong BPD symptoms have a poor sense of self-worth, a parent who is overly critical just makes things worse. Families should follow that. As long as your child has not done anything to harm others or shows a lack of compassion with others, just discuss the situation with them. Poor grades in schools would be a good example. 2. Bad fires do not burn, and responding to the rage of your teens with an outburst of coldness will only encourage them to make actions more repetitive. If your young woman tries to throw a tangle, let her do it. If you don't give them something for valid reasons, don't give it in. Remain calm and make sure that they are safe. Speak to them about actions.
actions until they calm down, and don't be afraid to have consequences. When you use things that do not belong to you to break down, make efforts to ensure that they repair these items. When you use them to threaten your health, politely tell them that, if the threat is repeated, the authorities are revoked. If the risk is repeated, continue. Treat all life threats seriously. This involves self-injurious activities such as self-mutilation by cuts. 3. Suicide, ideation, and self-injurious behaviors. Although research suggests that cuts are not indicative of suicide, the situation is considered a suicidal risk. Send the young person to the nearest emergency ward or mental ward and may also be admitted for tests overnight according to the nature of their acts or risks. At home, I removed everything that could be used to harm yourself from your space, and I met parents who took the doors away in their teenager's house. Obviously, your teen will not accept these actions, but calmly explained that you love them so much so that they are healthy. It is also prudent to have your teen see a therapist with whom you can work to build a plan in which your teen does not try to harm himself. Overreaction is always the best way to act and attempt suicide. It helps you regain control of the relationship, too. Once your child learns that you are willing to go beyond and beyond, it usually stops your behavior when it threatens to end your life instead of giving in. Every when a suicide threat or attempt is made, overreactions must be used. Reflect more on your positive relationship with your daughter, better attitude, morning greetings, housework completion, and family outings. Take a sincere effort to find and emphasize the positive aspects of your adolescent and teenage relationship. It helps them draw on their sense of self-esteem and confidence. And that's where we're going to pause today. Thanks for stopping in. Hit that like, hit that subscribe so we can dig deeper into borderline personality disorder. This is Nikki B signing off and I am glad you were here with me.